Hello, I'm Shoestring Jane. and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about saving money at Christmas and I'm doing this in collaboration with some of my favourite frugal YouTubers. That is Tess, Food, Finance and Frugal Living, Frugal Joe, Jane, a frugal queen in France and Claire's Journey. So once you've watched my video and given me a big thumbs up and subscribed and all those useful things, please do check out their videos too and I will leave the links below. So let's get on with it. You might think it's too early because it's mid-October, but it's mid-October, of course we should be thinking about Christmas, unless you're going to ignore it altogether, and good for you if that's what you decide to do, because it can be a stressful and expensive process. Um, unless you decide to ignore it altogether, you probably do need to do a bit of planning ahead. So, you know, it shouldn't come as a surprise. We know it's happening every year, but some people seem to be taken by surprise and they haven't put any money away and that kind of thing. So it gets really expensive and it gets really stressful. And, you know, it's not just the financial burden, it's the burden of time that it takes, everything takes to get ready. Um, and we've kind of got this idea in our heads of the perfect Christmas and what it should look like. Our homes should be beautifully decorated. Our tables should be full of delicious food food, we should be giving fabulous gifts that all of our family love. And, you know, in reality, it's one day, one day, or maybe, okay, if you count Christmas Eve and Boxing Day, it's three days, <laughs> three days, you probably don't want to celebrate for the whole time. So, you know, why do we get ourselves into such a stew over this short amount of time of the whole year. I mean, it should it should be fun. It should be fun. But that doesn't mean you just have to spend endless money to create the perfect Christmas that the ads, the TV ads tell us that we need to have. Um, you go on social media, that will tell you you need to have a certain, your Christmas a certain way as well. So really, I just think, you know, creating a mindset where you just create a Christmas that suits you and more importantly, suits your wallet and then you'll, you know, it'll be a happier Christmas. So, you know, you've got to think, is it worth getting into debt for? And I have done that. I've got into debt. I had a few years when I was a single parent. I was recently divorced and I was kind of trying to make up for those kind of things. My daughters were all at school at the time. I was trying to make up for the kind of stress of a divorce by buying them lots of stuff. And I, okay, I didn't go crazy, but I also hadn't budgeted for it. I wasn't really thinking about Christmas, to be perfectly honest with you. And I put it all on my credit cards. And I did that two years in a row. And I absolutely hated that. Going into the new year with credit card debt, and when you're already on a budget, so your wages come in, and a big chunk of your wages goes out to pay off your debt. And you'll see you're paying for Christmas in about April or May. And it's no fun. It's just no fun. So I learned the hard way and I decided I never wanted to, to do that again and I just wanted to reduce the pressure on myself and on my finances really. So here are some ideas that I have tried and that I think could help you. You can take them or leave them but some of them might be useful if you're finding Christmas all a bit too much of a burden. The first thing I did when I was trying to take control of my Christmas spending was to make a budget. So I think it's really important to write it down so you know exactly what's what and you remember as well. I find it really useful just to have a spreadsheet and on one page I have a list of everybody I need to buy for and I put ideas of what they might like in one column and then when I bought it I tick it off and put how much I actually spent. And then I have another spreadsheet, which is all food. So if we're going somewhere else, what do I need to take? If people are coming here, what do I need to make? And what do I need to buy? Um, so the things to consider are obviously presents, um, food, again, as I mentioned, decorations. I would say, I mean, I don't ever buy any decorations. I've bought them over the years. But if you're just setting off, you've got your first house or something like that, you might like to get some decorations. And outings and events. So particularly if you're at work or if your kids are at school, there tend to be lots of things going on at Christmas. So take note of all of those things. Think about what they're going to cost you. And then write hat down how much you think it's all going to cost, what the total is going to be. Can you afford it? If it's making you anxious... Can you scale it down a bit? 
you know, if it's really making you anxious and you think it's going to take you into debt, you might need just to have a rethink. And that might take some real pressure off you. So it's worth doing it. The next thing would be to, if necessary, to give yourself permission to scale down. So don't feel guilty about it. This is your life and it's your money. If you need to scale down, give yourself permission to do that. And that might mean that if you normally spend £20 a person, you spend £15 a person. If you normally spend £50 a person, you might decide actually £40 a person is all that you can afford. And that's really fine if that means that you will be debt free at the end of Christmas. So and are there people that you really don't need to buy for? Um, I used to buy presents for teachers until I realised they got so many presents that it was just it was ridiculous. So in the end, we used to just make them a nice card or a picture or something like that. And that's absolutely fine. If your children want to give your the teachers something or make them a cake, then that's really fine. That can be an inexpensive option. But I do know because my sister works in a school and she gets endless presents, which are lovely, but she just hasn't got use for however many bath sets, you know, and she ends up giving them away. So um, think about it. What about friends? Do you buy for friends? Do you have a big group of friends that you buy everybody a present in? And that can be quite expensive. So can you scale that down? Um, do you buy for friends' children? Is that something you really need to do? Could you be having a few conversations with people about that? And I think it's important to have honest conversations. If you can't afford it and you don't want to get into debt, then, you know, just be honest with whoever it is, work colleagues or, or whoever. And don't apologise for living within your means and staying out of debt because that's your decision. If other people have got more disposable income or they don't mind sticking it on their credit card, then that's their choice. And you can make your own choices. So the other people to set boundaries are your children. And I think with younger children, you really, you can get away with anything. I used to, you know, you can just give them something interesting, you can give them something that they've forgotten about that you put in the attic for two years sometimes. Um, but, you know, you can give them secondhand things, all sorts of things. But older children can be a bit more demanding and discerning. So you need to have honest conversations. Don't let them think that this all comes from Father Christmas because then they will ask for the sky because Father Christmas can produce anything. I mean, when mine were young enough to believe in Father Christmas, we would say one little gift came from Santa and the rest came from us. So they knew we had to buy it. Um, and, you know, you say this is the budget. This is how much we've got. And you could do that rule where you buy them something useful, something to eat, something to wear, that kind of thing. I can't think what the rule is now, for, for present rule, if you want to. Um, we used to do something around those. We'd buy them something to read, that's the other thing. We'd buy them some books, we'd buy them some pyjamas, we'd buy them some little gifty things, and we'd buy them their main present. Um, and they were happy with that, and that wasn't too expensive. And um, if you're somebody who always throws a Christmas party and your Christmas parties are legendary, but you actually can't afford to do that, that's a really expensive thing to do. Could you do something slightly different? Could you do it in a different way? Could you maybe suggest it's somebody else's turn to host the party? Or could you suggest a potluck Christmas supper so that everybody brings a dish, everybody brings a bottle, you can host it if you're happy to do that. And it doesn't cost you a lot of money everybody joins in it makes everybody feel involved as well um the other thing we did in my family is because i do have quite a large family i am one of four children and then when you counted in people's partners and their children buying a present for everybody became massively expensive and i did get to the point where i just thought i can't afford to do this anymore and i suggested we perhaps scale it down and put a five pound limit on it um or you know, have joke presents for the adults and everybody just buy something from a charity shop or something like that. And it didn't go down well with my family to start with. But then I suggested a secret Santa. Just for the adults, we'd still buy presents for the children. And um, we had, we'd now do a secret Santa for one person, one adult in the family. And we spend about £30. And that works really well. And actually, once people embraced that, it was a huge relief, I think partly in terms of the finance, and partly in terms of the time, because, you know, it's so it's, it takes a lot of time when you've got a massive family to buy presents for everybody. And, you know, you just trying to find out what they might like and that kind of thing. So that was a huge relief. And that works down works really well for us. You could think about other things 
other ways to do it. And if you tell your family, I'm sorry, I just can't afford to do this this year, and this is all I can afford to do, I want to join in, but I cannot afford to buy everybody a £50 present, then they'll accept that, they'll have to. So it's not a question of being mean, it's a question of not wanting to get into debt. And the other thing I found, particularly when I was working in an office, was that there were so many Christmas events. So we would have like a whole office Christmas party, we would have a team Christmas party, we would have a management Christmas party. And because I worked for the council, nothing was paid for. It's all very well if you work for some big corporation who throws a lavish do and you don't have to pay anything. Fantastic, take full advantage. We had to pay for our own and it all just got too expensive. So in the end, I just said, no, I'm just going to do my team Christmas and that's enough. Um, and the other thing that that happened was we had a team secret center and then we had a whole office secret center and then they tried to bring another office into the secret center and I just thought enough enough is enough I don't even know who I'm buying for with the whole whole office secret center anymore so no I decided just to stick to the team secret center and we kept it at minimal five pounds which was fine so you could just think about doing things slightly differently and giving yourself permission to scale down a bit if you need to Another thing is the Christmas food. Don't forget when you are buying Christmas food that it is only one to three days of celebrations. You know, how much food do you really need to buy for those days? So I would say meal plan just like you would any other week. Meal plan incorporate or well, plan to incorporate some leftovers. So if you've bought a big joint of meat for Christmas dinner, make sure that you've got good plans for that, even if it's just to chop it up and put it in the freezer so that you don't waste a lot of food so you can get really sick of eating leftovers so just don't buy too much and even worse sometimes things just get thrown away so you know don't buy too much so you don't end up throwing away and wasting a lot of food it's bad for your for your um finances but it's also bad for the planet isn't it so the other thing is when you're overeating you can start the new year feeling really awful and guilty and you've put on the pounds, you've eaten too much, you've drunk too much and you feel bad about yourself and then you go on a diet or join Weight Watchers and end up spending lots of money doing that. So if you think about those kind of things, it is only a couple of days, only by what you need. And the other thing is don't just buy something because it's traditional, unless you know somebody loves Christmas pudding or somebody loves Christmas cake or somebody loves dates and really will eat whatever you buy, just because they're traditional, don't buy them if nobody's going to eat them. It's not worth it. So that's the other thing to, to bear in mind. And if you're going to buy a ton of chocolates, then you know you're going to be eating them through the new year. So if you're somebody who's likely to want to go on a new year health binge, you don't want loads of chocolates in the house. So only buy you know a few treats and what you're going to eat, and then you save yourself a bit of money. Another thing you can do to save money at Christmas is make your own Christmas traditions and look for cheap ways to celebrate. And there are quite a few opportunities for this. So when you think about it, most of us have a bit of time off over Christmas, if we're lucky anyway. And it's an opportunity to spend quality time with our loved ones and our children. And that might sound like a cliche, but, you know, it's, it is a thing. We're quite time starved, a lot of us. Um, we don't have a lot of time to just relax with our families and Christmas could be a real good opportunity for that. And when you think about it, you know, in years to come, your children probably won't remember all the different Christmas gifts that they got. But they will remember things like maybe Christmas Eve was the night that they always sat down with you and had popcorn and watched a cheesy Christmas film on TV or that that was the day you always traditionally got all the board games out and the old-fashioned board games and had a games night or a games afternoon. In our case, we used to always go to the local church and they had a carol service for kids, carols for kids it was called, um, at 6pm in the evening, just when the kids were getting a bit fractious, you know, they were tired, they were getting tired, but they were excited and they didn't want to go to sleep. And we would go out to the Christmas carol concert, sing a few carols, and <clears throat> then they would get a sleepy biscuit on the way out, which was just a shortbread biscuit in the shape of a Christmas tree or something. And they were told it was a sleepy biscuit. And they believed it was a sleepy biscuit and it would help them go to sleep so that they wouldn't hear Father Christmas coming in and leaving their present. So that was our Christmas tradition. And they love that now. Occasionally we still go now, even though they're all adults. Um, 
And or you could do things like walk around your neighbourhood and look for the craziest Christmas houses, you know, the ones that have the really mental lights and um, the tackiest Christmas decorations and that kind of thing. And there's always some. And, you know, we've got one around the corner from us and they just ask for a small donation to an animal charity. And, you know, that's great. I don't mind giving them a pound or two to go and look at their lights. Or you can go into town and see your Christmas lights, particularly if you live in a bigger town where they, they make a big show of the lights. We do some quite nice ones where we are. Um, you can sometimes have a, like a, the lights are switched on on a certain day and it's a bit of an event. So look out for those kind of things. Check your local council website. Um, ours quite often has a Christmas laser light show and a Christmas market and they'll have carol singers and dancers and that kind of thing and it's just a nice event just to have a little walk around in early December it's really nice they also open up our castle so for free normally you have to pay they'll open it up for free and you can go and have a look around it and the kids can go and see Father Christmas so there are sometimes things like that going on. Um, look out for school and church bazaars and Christmas fates and those kind of things are nice to go to. Um, and you can also use an opportunity to do some Christmas crafts with your children. We have still got a couple of very bedraggled looking snowmen made of a loo roll tube and cotton wool and sequins and things that my girls made probably more than 20 years ago that we still bring out and left the eyes are all hanging off and the head's hanging off and it's just a joke now. But, you know, it's good memories. Um, you could make some things like that. You don't have to be an artist to make some nice Christmas crafts. Um, and you can use a lot of things that you've got. So it's always worth keeping the, the um, sweet wrappers from Christmas sweets and things and they can stick them on bits of card or they can make a Christmas tree and make them into Christmas baubles, those kind of things. Um, and you can do Christmas baking, make some Christmas biscuits or, you know, bake a cake, that kind of thing. Get your kids into the kitchen because kids love baking. They love making things in the kitchen and it's a really good life skill for them to learn as well. So make your own Christmas traditions. And another thing you can do to save money is to make some of your own Christmas gifts. And you don't have to be the most talented person in the world to make something nice and effective that's not too expensive. There's an amazing thread on my Facebook group, which is called My Second Hand and Frugal Life, where people have made put suggestions for Christmas crafts. And some of these will be really suitable for gifts. And there's all sorts of things like upcycled objects that they've found in the charity shop and painted and decorated hampers using old wicker baskets they filled with nice sort of th cheap things food and drink um somebody was making sleighs from candy so they they were to, for Chris, christmas presents for children and they were the whole thing was made of sweets and it was amazing and pot plants that people had grown themselves dream catchers some homemade christmas crackers knitted and crocheted gifts pictures that people had made themselves one lady had made um, are personalised pictures from old Scrabble letters saying things like dad and granddad and that kind of thing. Really great things. So take a look at that if you want some ideas. You don't have to be the most talented patient person in the world. You could even make some pots of jam, some chutneys, those kind of things. So consider perhaps making some of your own Christmas presents this year. Something else that I like to do at Christmas to save everybody a bit of time and money is to shop thoughtfully for people and give hints and get hints. So I hate buying presents for people when I have no clue what they like or what their tastes are and that kind of thing. I would much rather grill them or grill their nearest family members to find out what they might like um, what they enjoy and that kind of thing. And if I can't find that out, I'd give give them a fairly, fairly generic sort of voucher because, you know, a boots voucher or something like that that anybody's going to use because I don't want to give somebody something they're not going to enjoy or use. And similarly for myself, I will drop large hints or even just outright tell people what I would like for Christmas so that they don't waste their money buying me something that I'm not going to use or appreciate. So if you do receive unwanted gifts, of course, you can always donate them or you can re-gift them. I don't think there's any shame in re-gifting something. It's much better to do that than to waste it, in my view, anyway. So shop thoughtfully and drop major hints. And as you will know, if you've been watching my channel or reading my blog, shoestringcottage.com, for a while, I am on a year of buying only second hand. So that's what I'm going to be doing for people for Christmas. So they'll either be getting secondhand gifts from me or 
they will there'll be a secondhand element and it will be something that they can use or eat consumables basically so but there's a lot of things you can easily buy secondhand. Um, the big one for me has always been children's toys. You can pick up children's toys secondhand in really good condition on places like Facebook Marketplace or in char charity shops as well. Um, books are really good. You can always pick those up. Sometimes they've barely been read and they're certainly good enough to pass on. Um, gift sets so you can get gift sets in the charity shops they bring them out this time of year and they're much cheaper than they would have been if you'd gone into the shop and bought them initially and secondhand electronics and games are good so um, you know if your kids love playstations you can always find those kind of things secondhand again facebook marketplace is really good for those kind of things and board games you can pick those up and puzzles and those kind of things as well you can pick them all up secondhand so consider buying at least some of your presents secondhand and that will save you money and will also save some waste and there are some other smaller ways you can save money at Christmas as well so for example I no longer send Christmas cards out that was partly it was mostly actually to do with the environment. I just thought, what a load of waste, really. Um, but you could use last year's Christmas cards and make them into new Christmas cards. I know people that do that. Or send e-cards instead. That's what I tend to do. Um, it saves you on the postage and it saves time writing them out as well. Um, reuse wrapping paper and gift bags and gift bows and things. Keep them carefully from one year and use them to the next. Um, and if you don't have those, use just plain brown parcel paper to wrap your presents instead. They can look really tasteful if you do things like just use some coloured twine or maybe you've got some old coloured ribbon. Um, you can tie a little pine cone to them. I've seen people do that to make them look nice. And it's cheaper and more eco-friendly, again, especially if you buy recycled brown paper. Um, me personally, I will use scarves and fabric and that kind of thing to wrap my presents with again that's more from an eco-friendly perspective but it also does save some money you can make gift tags out of your old christmas cards as well so just some pinking shears maybe and um, a little hole punch and you've got a new gift tag you could think about buying your cards your wrap and gift set sets and presents in the January sales as well. So that's really thinking ahead, isn't it? Um, I quite often have a no spend January, so I often don't do that these days, but I always used to. I'd be in there buying a ton of stuff um, and don't do what I've done before, which is then stick them in the attic and forget that they're there and buy more wrapping paper, etc. But if, you, if you're organised and you know what you've got, you can save money by buying that kind of thing in the sales as you go along. I hope I've shown you that you can enjoy the holiday season without spending a fortune and getting yourself into debt. So just stick to your budget. Be very, very determined about what you want to spend and what you're happy to spend. And, tr and you'll find it's a lot less stress and you're going to the new year without that financial hangover that Christmas can sometimes bring. So it's a bit early to say this, but happy Christmas. And if you like this video, don't forget, give me the thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of content and don't forget to check out my frugal collaborators. I'll leave the links below as I said. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.